What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. The Amazon Echo Auto, the one for your car, is invite only, and I just got mine! So let's check it out. I'm not sure why it's invite only, but I'm kind of curious about this product. I definitely want to show you what comes with it when you do order it. It's basically half off the retail price of $50, $25. I assume you'll have to submit for an invitation too. Um, but I am curious about checking it out because I want to show you what it's about. But I'll be honest, I kind of think it's stupid. Um, I'm hoping that it changes my mind after I use it. I'm not only just going to unbox it, but I'm going to hold off on posting this video until after I get um, several days of use in my car with it because I really want to give it a fair shake because, like I said, I kind of think it's stupid. Um, so here, you get this uh, clip-on mount, and you can see here how it works. Uh, it's got all this plastic on it. So what will end up happening here is it's just like a little shelf. This little rubber, sticky, grippy piece kind of clips onto an air vent. Then we have a little foam on the back here and a foam up here so you shouldn't scratch anything. And then what will end up happening is you can see how this little L bracket here uh, allows the Amazon Echo to be mounted up here. So it's kind of above the air vent so the air can blow out of it without necessarily blowing onto it. And then it will have to be powered through your... Um, your what do you call it? Accessory port? USB? And everything you're going to need for that is in here. So, uh, looks like a little tab to pull it out, which is nice. And we have Amazon Echo instructions, get start guide, things to try. It, I also think it's interesting because I'm not sure if this might replace the need for one of those, you know, clip on visor speaker phones, maybe. Maybe it'll do that too. That could be a, a, a useful feature here. You do have a three and a half millimeter cable. This looks like it's probably three or four feet. So if you have an aux port for that on your stereo, you can use that. I guess I kind of think it's, I guess it's not necessarily for older cars per se. You have a micro USB cable, which you're gonna need for power. But I think that's where it might shine, cars that don't have a lot of with original technology. You do have a dual USB port power uh, adapter there. And then, that's it. We have the Echo Auto right here. Now it's pretty small, and it's the smallest Echo I've ever seen, which is kind of nice. And you can see it's kind of round. It feels a little bit like a, a small remote control. It's very light. You can see we have a recess piece here, which I think will allow it to snap on here. Maybe it's magnetic even. Yeah, it must, ooh, it's magnetic, so it'll sit on there. Now I will say, you can see it's all black plastic, but we have a little um, translucent piece right there where you'll get that blue Amazon Echo light, so you're gonna want it facing this way. Now I'm assuming all these holes are microphones to help pick up any sound. Not sure what this big slot on there is. Micro USB there, your aux out. And what I think you will want to do is pair it to your Bluetooth in your car. Hands-free protocol, A2DB, I'm not sure. Uh, in mine, it when you pair it, it connects both protocols. And then you can see you have the microphone control button right there, so you can turn off the mic or not. And then I think this is your mode. But unlike some of the other Echoes, you don't have you know, the full range of controls here. You don't have like the volume and all that jazz. So I'm assuming you'll have to control that, it'll probably just output in the loudest setting, you'll control it on your actual car stereo. And then you're also gonna have to pair it to your phone and you're gonna set it up in your Amazon Alexa app because it's gonna get set up just like any other new app. So uh, I'm gonna set that up and then put it in the car, use it for a little while and then give you my thoughts. All right guys, so I have my Amazon Echo Auto here. Basically my learning on this is that I'm not sure why this exists. So first of all, I tried putting it on the vent, but as you can see, my vent blades are pretty close. So that mount that they give you uh, kind of tries to break my vent blade. So if I push that in here, as you can see, it starts spreading my blades apart. And I don't even want to push it in too far because what it does is it starts bowing the top and bottom ones out. So I didn't actually use this, so I just put it down here and that seems to work all right. Now, you might be able to see that I've got my power cord running to my glove box power outlet instead of the one down here because just 
depending on the type of car you have, this power port never turns off. It doesn't turn off when I turn off the car. And so it always stays plugged in and it always stays active and powered. And that worries me because I think it's going to drain the battery. Now, let me get to the more philosophical problem and the practical problem of owning this thing. First of all, I will say its voice recognition is pretty good, just like every other Amazon Echo device. And I do like the soft, sultry voice of Amazon Echo or Alexa. Now, the problem is you've got to really love Alexa over all the other digital systems, over Siri and Google Now or whatever, or Hey Google, uh, because that's really all this is. And in fact, in many ways, this device here doesn't really do anything except work as an external speaker that's always on for your phone. So you end up connecting it to your phone and then it connects to the Bluetooth in your car and a couple of problems with it. So I have with this head unit, A2DP Bluetooth for music streaming, as well as the hands-free protocol. But when you connect it here uh, automatically through the app, it always plays through A2DP. So if I don't have it on A2DP here and I'm on listening to the radio and I say something to Alexa, she hears it, responds, and pushes that out on Bluetooth A2DP, but it never hears it because it's not saying, well, I'm not on that input. And so that's a problem. You've got to actually be on the Bluetooth, um, the Bluetooth channel that or protocol that this uses. So that's a little bit of a problem. The other thing that I hate is that it really doesn't do anything other than leverage my phone. So I actually try using it for directions. I asked it to take me home. I asked it to take me to work and stuff like that. And what it does is it just pops up a notification on my phone to accept it and I hit it and then it just uses the default Apple map application on my phone. So this doesn't really give me any particular directions. Yeah, there's no GPS in it or anything like that. So I guess that makes sense that if you're asking for directions, all it's going to do is pass an address that I can find back to your phone. And that's going to be the navigational piece. The other thing is I thought, well, maybe it's kind of like one of these, you know, Bluetooth visor phones and you would be able to use the microphones on here and the speakers to your car to add a speakerphone to an older car or something like that. But that's not the case either. If I make a call or tell it to dial 1-800-HOT-BABES, what ends up happening is it just dials on your phone. And so my phone is what's calling out, so it's no different there. So to me, the problem is if you have Siri or uh, Hey Google or something like that, the Google Assistant, then you have everything you need. All this is is a separate device that connects to your phone and creates an always on Alexa microphone. I think what they really need to do is create like an Alexa app on say your iPhone that runs in the background or is always listening or something like that. Because basically what they can't do, I guess, is that. And so they've created this device. That's all this is, is basically if you love the Amazon digital assistant, which I do, but not so much that I would have a whole separate device just to activate it, basically, and use my phone, right? So I don't really understand why this exists. Uh, for 25 bucks, you can put in your car and have it as an auxiliary piece. But if I want to use Apple Maps to find a location, I'll probably just say, hey, Siri, um, take me to the nearest McDonald's. Or, hey, Siri, um, you know, what's the weather? Like all those things that you can ask Alexa, you can ask Siri. Now, Siri, again, maybe isn't as good. You can't put as many skills with it, but that's all this is. And it baffles me. So I'm glad I bought it to discover all that. But I guess I don't know who would really want to buy this. If you do want to pick it up, I will put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.